In the grand scheme of things, Dan and Wits is small, insignificant, and close to negligible. It is a general store in a 4,000 person town in Vermont, the second least populous state in the Union. But to the people of the Norwich community, Dan and Wits is everything. It is a family, a community, and part of home. Dan was my grandfather, and he and Witt started Dan and Witt's in 1955. They worked for the Merrill family in the 30s when they were in high school. When the Merrills decided to sell the store in the 50s, they purchased it from him. And in, 19, in the 1970s, Witt sold his half to my grandfather, Dan. And I've been here all my life pretty much. Then he was there. So then we grew a little and knew a lot. But what also sets Dan and Witz apart is something that is not readily seen, but is easily felt in every aspect of the store. Dan and Witz exemplifies a unique culture of consumerism, one that stands in contrast to the majority of consumerism experienced today. Be in my eyes, be in my heart, be in my eyes, I, 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 be in my heart. Dan and Witt strives for sustainability. The consumer experience is uniquely sustainable on multiple levels. Yeah, if we don't have it, you don't need it is our motto. It's always been that way. Some people have tried to um, use that motto as well. Uh -huh. And so, um, you know, we sort of have that grandfathered in and work in there for us, which is good. And for the most part, I think it's, it's true. pig's feet that people um, huh. purchase to eat, and we've got um, coyote urine which people use to hunt. Sort of old-fashioned kind of things and random um, things that people don't always expect. I'm told somebody once came asking for a church pulpit, and they had one of those upstairs somewhere. Oh. They even had that. Make you think she needs it, it's time. So we do try to purchase things locally if we can. Uh, our customers are very dedicated to us, which is nice. So we try and find products that they, you know, that they sell or make is good, and the products that they want. My son sells eggs here, for example, from his chickens at home. So and they're very flexible about taking local products and that kind of thing, which is great. Back, people that worked here 20 years ago or 30 years ago when they were in high school or college or whatever, they love coming in and go, oh my god, nothing's changed, that's great. The floors are still the old creaky floors. We don't really like to change things unless we have to or unless things wear out free. It's part of the charm, it's part of what makes this place unique. We try to keep things pretty basic and then add a few new products without changing things, you know, in here too much. Ethics are often touted as a selling point for businesses big and small. Buying Tom's shoes buys shoes in other countries. Donation boxes at McDonald's gives money to children's hospitals around the country. But Dan and Wits ensures that their service efforts go right back into their community. Dan and Wits is known throughout the Upper Valley for their generosity and care. We've been doing um, wine tastings uh, in conjunction with the Norwich Inn about once a month and they've become so popular now that we're sort of up to twice a month or even sometimes three times a month. And we started that in December 2010 and I think we've raised over $24,000 for the different nonprofits. Here comes the Last year we started something called the 19 Days of Norwich, which is a fundraiser for the Haven, and we donate 1% of our sales from December 1st through 19th. And there's about 50 businesses in town that are doing it this year, as well as um, probably 30 businesses from outside of Norwich that are participating this year as well. Tons of turkeys uh, between Dan and Wits and my Girl Scout troop. In the community, we've raised over 2,000 pounds of turkeys. 
and like today we're taking the last of the turkeys to the Haven. So there is a lot of community. Um, right now a lot of it's the Haven and the Hartford Baskets, or it's Hartford Baskets for Christmas, mm -hmm. and raising um, presents and stuff for the little kids in the neighborhood. Customers, producers, and Dan and Witz are highly interwoven. Connections exist between every party involved in the consumer process, between customers and employees, employees and producers, and producers and customers. The store even fosters connections between the employees themselves and serves as a community hub for customers to connect with each other. It is no wonder that everyone is quick to describe the store as a family. generation, I'm a third generation of the family that has worked here. So, you know, we've had vacations, we've had kids, we've had all those issues that come up, we've had someone being sick. And so we know exactly how our employees feel and we want to keep our employees. We, you know, that's part of the draw here is to have employees so you don't have to keep training people over and over again. We're one big happy, most of the time one big happy family. Um, the joke is that there's mom and dad and, and then there, we've got brothers and sisters, but there's not, other than the Frasers, there's not anybody related. I mean, but the closeness, the family. Mm -hmm. I mean, if something happened, we're usually there to help either show their cry on or helping hand to move. Um, being a part of the family, being part of the community. Romance and G's. The significance really is that it's a. Uh, a community, a community resource and a general store for for everybody, and it's getting rarer and rarer. It seems like in the rest of the country to have such a great resource here. So. It's just getting to know people. If you come in, like I said, I've been here for a while. Lori, my coworker, and I sometimes we can just tell people by their walk, by their voice, and get them what they want from breakfast sandwiches to burgers to salads. It's part of the anchor of our one of the anchors of our community and, it, and you know, you see people here you know and it's, it's, uh, it's uh, makes sense to shop here. There's just a lot of people connect to that you know the um, some people live by the big box stores and a lot of people live by the small stores, so you know, whatever, whatever works for them. I mean, it works for Dan and Wits, you know, they're all, all great. They live right local, you know, and they, they're involved in the community all the time. So I think people know what they're getting and, uh, you know, they're kind of held accountable, to, you know, to the standards because they are local. Word travels fast if you don't have a, a good product or something, or you know it gets back to the local stores, so they you know they would, would let you know. So, and it's keeping money in the in the local area is always important. I think to some degree this area has been a little bit immune to the to the real recession that we've had, to, you know, because of the college, because of the hospital, and. Uh, and by people consciously shopping all the time. Go ahead. So uh, we today have been all around the Upper Valley to about, what, four different stores now? Maybe. Because she wants a new game for her computer, a Sims game, and we're trying to find the lowest price. So we have been to a few different places looking for that. 
to Walmart today? Well, there aren't a lot of choices Okay. for lower prices and a wide selection. I'm coming to buy a mailbox and a shovel. Awesome. Thank you. We are all consumers, every one of us, and the vast majority of our consumer experiences revolve around these big chains. These stores epitomize a disconnected form of consumerism, one in which employees, customers, and suppliers are detached on every level. It is not to say that these big companies are bad. Rather, disconnection in consumerism exists because big stores are efficient, convenient, and cheap. Add online shopping into the picture, and consumerism becomes even more disconnected. In the midst of all of this, small, connected, ethical, and sustainable stores are often believed to be insignificant, out of date, and doomed in our modern times. But this store, this community, is vital and thriving. Communities like Dan and Witt's may be small and insignificant when compared with these conglomerates, but the unique culture of consumerism and sense of community they create is anything but.